King of the pool, Michael Phelps, all-conquering racehorse, see the stars, and fastest man alive, Usain Bolt. But what I'd like you to do is rank them in order of who would consume the most calories the day before competition. Jamie, Tom, John, what do you think? I think that's the most stupid question I've ever been asked. <laughs> <laughs> One of them is a horse. <laughs> it's a bleeding horse. Michael Phelps. You've yes. been to the Olympics with him. You, you must know him. I've been in the same pool as him, but I haven't actually. So he's, he's bombing and you're diving trying to miss him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> have you been in the same pool as him? Only up, Phelps is coming. <laughs> um, no, it's kind of like there's a pool here and a pool here. They're kind of separate pools. Diving pool and a swimming pool. Does a diver have a special diet? Because to me, the more you eat, the better you just go down quick. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever, ever hit your head? Any? Yeah, accidents? I've hit my head twice actually. I've got a scar no. here. You hit your head? Yeah. And you thought, I'll carry on with this? Yeah. And I kind of dived off the edge, hit my head on the board, and didn't realise I'd done it. And then my coach came over and said, There's blood in the pool. And I was like, Oh. And it looked like there was like a shark attack in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> James, how would you expect him to stop? What, to stop diving? Yeah. In midair. Yeah, <laughs> <hit> his head. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't mean that so much. Bob. <laughs> Why didn't you is it can you stop? <laughs> he is world champion, maybe he can stop. Can you stop? Can you stop midair? Tell me you can levitate. <laughs> <laughs> if you have back on the board, I guess you'd stop then. You'd get huge numbers. If you could do a big vroom with Pike and stop. In midair, get a hand clap going. <laughs> and then carry on. That would be. If I don't see that 2012, I'm going to be very disappointed. <laughs> I should say that Tom is 15, and sometimes some things can get a little risque. And Tom, by law, <laughs> you're not allowed to hear them, okay? OK? So, we have provided you <laughs> with these, all right? Now, what this basically means is, whenever something rude is being said, you've got to get them on okay. as soon as you can. Okay. So, let's try it now, let's try it now. So, yeah, so basically, he grabbed her, turned her over and started... <laughs> and that's how we'll do it, all right? That's how we'll do it. It's not me, it's the law. Let's have a look at Michael Phelps. So you always get hungry when you swim? Yeah. And the only thing that'll satisfy you after swim is beef crisps. It's true. It's true. From or the vending beef, machine. Or beef hula hoops. From the vending machine. Yeah. yeah. And maybe it was hula hoops, the five rings, that attracted him to the Olympic event. <laughs> <laughs> what, what goes on, like, like pre-match meals and football have changed, what happens now? The player that used to eat the, uh, the biggest meal, and it was Sol Campbell, Big Sol, he used to have the biggest meal before a game. Like, you know, you go up and you get your pastas, your fish, your chicken, a bit of steak. He'd have it all on there. And it was that big, he didn't know to eat or climb it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Freddie, any big pre match meals? What did you used to eat before you went out there? Kebab. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to Usain Bolt. He's uh, 13 and a half stone, 6 foot 5 inches tall, and he ran 100 metres in a world record 9.58 seconds. <laughs> Apparently, he was a hyperactive child. Uh, Jamaican doctors claimed it, this was because his mother ate too much cheese during pregnancy. You was at the Olympics with Usain Bolt as well. Did you get he to meet him? He was constantly at McDonald's. Was he? Eating really? chicken nuggets. He eats something else as well, doesn't he? He eats, a, he eats a Jamaican fruit, you know? Yam or something like that, something that you only get in Jamaica. He eats loads of, like, a potato-based fruit. <laughs> I know a potato... You know. A potato-based fruit, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you learn oh, something God. new every <laughs> single day. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, do you have any potato-based fruit? <laughs> what? <laughs> and does anyone know what new career See the Stars has embarked upon? Celebrity... <laughs> celebrity <laughs> dancer on that. See <laughs> <laughs> the now, Stars? Now, that I would love to see. <laughs> <laughs> He'd still be better than Todd Carty. That's the other. <laughs> I can tell you what Steve, See the Stars has embarked on. Tom, cover up, please. <sighs> he started working as a stud. Yeah. He impregnates as many mares as he can handle for £75,000 a pop. That is, that is something that, you know, John Terry could think about. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, Usain Bolt set a world record for the 100 metres, beating the record set when Freddie Flintoff heard the barman shout, Last Orders. <laughs> <laughs> No, no stranger to risk taking. He damaged his knee ligaments while bending down to pick up his television remote control. <laughs> he later topped this 
by nearly ending his career whilst trying to catch a fish. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you had any daft injuries, Fred? I'd ask you, Jamie, but we've only got a couple of hours. Have you, uh... I slid down an old-fashioned goalpost, ripping my testicle sack open. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that testicle medical term. That's amazing. She's almost got a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I opened up, my testicle fell out onto the, uh, the ground. And my main memory of it is a little puppy coming up to sniff it. <laughs> really, Ted? Neil Tuffle's cheeky personality has seen him advertise all sorts of products. Apparently, the only job he's ever refused is for a well-known travel agency. They had to find a different washed-up sportsman for that one. <laughs> <laughs> So we've asked Tom to tell us the three best things about being a diver. It's open to both teams, but let's start with Freddie's team. Freddie, Georgie, Bob, what do you think? Best things about being a diver? Is it that you never have to dress for work? <laughs> nice. You just turn up in your pants and it's all fine and acceptable. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> you don't need any equipment at all, do you? All you need is gravity, and of course that's as cheap as chips, really. <laughs> you're, you're very high up, so you might occasionally get to see your house. <laughs> because you've always got a really lovely tan, haven't you? Do you have to have a spray tan or, or sunbed or...? No, I just... It's because I... Like, last year, I was tan because I did... The World Championships were outdoors, so if you're in Rome with 45-degree heat, you kind of are going to pick up a bit of a Jamie, sunbed. Jamie, do you, do you use sunbeds? No, I do. <laughs> no, he's, he's always on holiday, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, babe, I'm just taking the horse down the beach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What are the big advantages to being, a, a, you know, a student at school and being really famous? I'm treated normal at school. Um, I'm at a school where everyone's kind of, like, treated normally. There's loads of, like, elite athletes there that compete for England, so... It's very similar to my school. <laughs> it's, it's a school for, like, swimmers, and I'm kind of, like, like the tag-along diver in the swimmer... Like so what, do you have lessons in the pool? <laughs> do you have lessons in the pool? No, no. Well, they're all just treading water with their book lines. <laughs> Swimming hierarchy, like a diver's thought of to be better than. Well, at our school, because there's like, well, there's like 50 swimmers in our school, so it's kind of like you have to call it the aquatic crew now because like the divers is in it as well. The aquatic crew. Yeah, yeah I'm loving that. <laughs> <laughs> Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> Is it like that? Is it like that? Yeah, like that. Yeah, like that. 